the Democrat crime epidemic. Mr. Reagan. Democrats in this country treat corruption not merely as a tool that they may or may not use, but rather as standard operating procedure. And I intend to show in this video that Democrats are a crime network. They operate like a mafia and they are corrupt through and through. Earlier this year, I made a video where I proposed some things about why John Durham had not yet arrested anyone or even issued an interim report. I speculated about the vastness of the corruption in Washington, D.C. Well, I decided to dig into the corruption of the Democrats and what I found was astonishing. There have been arrests made all over the country in the past couple of years. This has become such a problem that I would call it a crime epidemic, a Democrat crime epidemic. The data of 2.3 million users has been leaked after a hacker managed to find a backdoor into the popular dating site Meet Mindful. Leaked personal data included names, Facebook IDs, emails, birthdays, location data, and more. The data was then uploaded to a public hacking forum for anyone to download. Meet Mindful says that they have since patched the flaw, but the damage is already done. If you want to prevent attacks like this from happening to you, I highly recommend Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield is the only VPN that I will ever use because they have a strict no log policy built into their software from the ground up for privacy protection. Go to virtualshield.com slash Mr. Reagan to get Virtual Shield for 50% off today or click on the link in the description below. Have the crimes of bribery, extortion, blackmail, vote doctoring, and other forms of political fraud and corruption become business as usual with Democrats in America today? Has this become the standard by which they operate? Because as you will see, these fraud techniques do not seem like something that various politicians around the country seem to have come up with independently. It makes far more sense that there is a nexus, some kind of web of communication coming from a primary source, perhaps in DC, encouraging this kind of behavior. Because I think the information about how to do this sort of stuff is shared, it's taught. It's not just dreamed up by all of these criminals independently. These people are communicating. Now I'm gonna go through some of the most egregious examples in this video. They're shocking in their sheer number, but keep in mind, these are only the ones I've found in two short days of research, how many other cases have I missed and how many other cases have gone unnoticed or even been ignored by the FBI? Some of the most egregious corruption in the country can be found within the state that I currently reside, California. Last year, the FBI finally closed in on a Los Angeles city councilman that they'd been investigating for five years. His name, Jose Huizar. City Councilman Huizar is a Mexican immigrant. Before getting arrested, I'm sure he was exactly the type of immigrant that Democrats would have exhibited as an example of the kind of people that we want coming into this country from Mexico. And our other big story today, the FBI agents arrest LA City Councilman Jose Huizar. Huizar has long been suspected in a corruption scandal. These are actually bundles of cash, just some of the bribes he is accused of accepting. Huizar now faces a federal racketeering case. Federal prosecutors have described corruption inside L.A. City Hall as a cancer, a disease of elected officials who've allegedly ignored what's best for the public and instead have lined their pockets. The feds say Weezar is the fifth to face charges in a large conspiracy and was referred to by the alleged conspirators as the boss, who's now accused of accepting one and a half million dollars in bribes and other enticements like these bundles of cash the FBI seized from Weezar's closet. In in exchange, Weezar is accused of pushing projects through approval, interfering with labor unions, and limiting demands for the number of affordable housing units that cost the developers profit. The feds say no one who saw what was happening inside City Hall reported it. But this case is far worse than people know because the businesses that were bribing Weezar were Chinese companies. This is a case of China bribing American politicians. Jose Huizar even went on a family vacation to China, fully paid for by the Chinese businessmen that were bribing him. Why isn't this on NBC? Why isn't this on CNN? Why isn't it in the New York Times? Well, I think we know why. There were also a bunch of other people involved within City Hall and, of course, a bunch of Chinese people and Chinese companies. Mayor Garcetti, it should be noted, demanded Jose Huizar's resignation after all of this was exposed. What a good guy that Mayor Garcetti. No way he could be involved in anything criminal or unethical himself. The mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti, seems to be untouchable. He somehow got out of numerous scandals in City Hall, 
utterly unscathed. Now, City Hall is riddled with corrupt officials. The city council, Garcetti's own deputy mayor, even the Department of Water and Power. And yet Garcetti apparently knew nothing about any of it. Sure, of course he didn't. Nothing suspicious about that at all. Except Eric Garcetti seems to have figured out a way to funnel money to a buddy of his, Rick Jacobs. He's doing this through something called the Mayor's Fund. The Mayor's Fund is a kind of loophole. It allows businesses to circumvent bribery laws and limitations on campaign contributions. But make no mistake, this is just legal corruption. It may be legal, but it is corrupt. Has any of the money that's been paid out to Rick Jacobs found its way back to Eric Garcetti's pockets? Has Garcetti employed similar schemes with any of his other friends or relatives? Who knows? But it's certainly not out of the realm of possibilities. Another scheme of Garcetti's is something called behest payments. This is basically bribery, but it's another legal loophole in California. Kamala Harris did it, and Gavin Newsom also does it. You can read all about Garcetti's corruption in the new book by Peter Schweitzer called Profiles in Corruption. This is a fantastic read. The city of Los Angeles, jam-packed with Democrats and also riddled with corruption. And that is just the first place I want to look at. Wait until you hear about New Jersey. I met with the chairman, the Democratic chairman of Atlantic, basically said, you are going to vote for impeachment. And I said, no, I'm not. I have my reasons and I believe they're valid and we can speak about those in a moment. I said, but you know, I appreciate your input, but no, I'm not doing that. And his point was that, well, if you don't do it, you're not gonna get the line. And I think a lot of folks may or may not know what the line is, but it's the, the part of the ballot that you get where you're running with everybody that's part of the mainstream group. And he says, you're not gonna get the line. In fact, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that you can't even run in Atlanta County or don't have any real opportunity. That was a real sign to me. That was one piece of a number of issues over time that have chased me out of the party. So basically, this guy was a Democrat, Jeff Van, Van Drew. He realized that impeachment was a scam, which we all know that it was. So he stands up against impeachment, which is an odd thing for him to do as a Democrat, but he realized it was the only ethical thing to do. So then this weaselly loser, Michael Suleiman, he's got some kind of political clout, I guess, out there in Atlantic City, and he says, if you don't vote for impeachment, I'm going to hurt your chances at re-election. Make no mistake, this is a threat. He's trying to leverage Van Drew here. This is unethical. This is probably illegal. But either way, it's totally corrupt. And this Weasley loser gets on the same show over there in New Jersey, and he admits to doing it. Did you threaten him with not getting the line? if he stayed with being uh, against impeachment? The goal was to get the guy to do the right thing, to vote for impeachment because it's the right thing to do for our country. Why couldn't you support him for the next election just because of this one vote? We are at a precipice in our country. We have a corrupt, deranged president, and it pains me to say it. So for him to not do the right thing and vote against impeachment is not... I won't tolerate it. I know a lot of my county committee members won't tolerate it. This guy has zero remorse. He just acts like this is natural. Of course, of course I'm going to threaten the congressman, demand that he falls in line. He's not acting like a loyal Democrat. Of course he's going to be punished. This just shows that corruption is business as usual among Democrats in New Jersey. Anyway, that doesn't even begin to cover the corruption in New Jersey. Between 2002 and 2008, there were over 130 public officials in that state who were convicted on federal corruption charges, over 130. And most of them, of course, were Democrats. This is basically because Chris Christie was the US attorney there and he made public corruption a priority. Then in 2012, the mayor of Trenton, the capital of New Jersey, he was arrested for bribery, fraud, extortion, money laundering. He was convicted in 2014 on all counts. Mac, his brother, Raphael, and Joseph Giorgiani allegedly set up a scheme to collect bribes in return for allowing the building of a parking garage down the block from City Hall. Separately, Giorgiani is also charged with running an oxycodone ring. Even the damn school board is corrupt in New Jersey. Thomas, named as one of five public officials and political candidates, criminally charged Thursday with accepting bribes. New Jersey, what's going on with you guys? Sort yourself out.
I mean, New Jersey corruption has been so bad over the years that there's there's just no way to go over all of it here. Just researching through news clips on YouTube, I was overwhelmed with the sheer volume of cases. The state of New Jersey, that state has a long history of corruption. Today, it got longer. Federal agents fanned out in massive raids, rounding up mayors, assemblymen, other public officials, even rabbis. The sweeping arrests cap a two-year investigation with allegations that are stunning even by New Jersey standards. Today in New Jersey, the mayors of Hoboken, Secaucus, and Ridgefield were among dozens of public officials charged with taking bribes in one of the largest crackdowns in the state's history. Mayors, deputy mayors, New Jersey state assemblymen, city councilmen. All city allegedly candidates. on the take, pocketing cash in exchange for political favors. The politicians willingly put themselves up for sale. Hundreds of thousands in bribes were paid in those places. New Jersey's corruption problem is one of the worst, if not the worst, in the nation. The investigation also turned up a Brooklyn man accused of selling human kidneys. His business was to entice vulnerable people to give up a kidney for $10,000, which he in turn would, would turn around and sell for $160,000. I also found several cases of voter fraud, and you all saw how the New Jersey governor went after businesses during the pandemic with, like, an iron fist. New Jersey is a mess because of Democrat politicians. I could go on about New Jersey for hours, but let's move on to New York. A disgraced former assemblyman will spend more than a decade in prison. William Boylan Jr. was sentenced today for a crime you paid for. Well, Cody, it was the bogus per diem expenses, also bribes in return for political favors, skimming money from a nonprofit. That was the trifecta that William Boylan Jr. was convicted of. Well, for decades, he was one of the most powerful men in Albany. Now, former Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver is going to prison. The Lower East Side Democrat found guilty on all seven charges in his corruption retrial today. 70-year-old Dean Skelos walked out of court with his wife, Gail, silent. Skelos testified that his 36-year-old son, Adam, had trouble finding work. He said he merely asked business people if they could do anything to help Adam. But prosecutors say Skelos bribed those companies to give Adam roughly $300,000 in consulting and no-show jobs. Both are due to receive more than 100 years in prison. However, thanks to court sentencing guidelines, that's expected to be much less. Well, corruption claims another state lawmaker, an assemblyman from Queens in the spotlight tonight for a reason that really is all too familiar to us. Did you misuse any of the money that you I, had? I don't believe I did. But the FBI confirms the agency raided Assemblyman William Scarborough's offices in Albany and New York. Now let's look at Pennsylvania. Federal indictment of a U.S. congressman. It's a racketeering conspiracy case prosecutors are working that involves Pennsylvania Democrat Shaka Fata. He and several associates are named in a 29-page indictment for their alleged roles in bribery, mail fraud, falsification of records, mishandling campaign funds, money laundering, all with the purpose of putting money in their own pockets. Federal prosecutors say Michael Ozzie Myers paid a Philadelphia poll worker to add votes for candidates in the 2014, 2015, and 2016 primary elections. Voting is the cornerstone of our democracy. And if only one vote has been illegally rung up or fraudulently stuffed into a ballot box, the integrity of that entire election is undermined. We are learning more now tonight about the alleged corrupt activities carried out by the now former Scranton mayor, Bill Courtright. Courtright pleading guilty to three felony corruption charges today. Investigators say this was a classic case of a pay-to-play scheme here in Scranton, which included bribes, threats of economic harm to business owners who do not pay to play, and in some cases, downright nastiness to anyone who resisted his strong arm tactics. First African-American DA Seth Williams, boy, hit with federal corruption charges yesterday. Williams, who has long denied any wrongdoing, withdraws his not guilty plea and resigns as Philadelphia District Attorney. The judge accepted Seth Wilty's guilty plea. So what this means is that he is facing a potential maximum of five years in prison. Out of the state of Pennsylvania, uh, the state's attorney general, Kathleen Kane, who's the first woman and the first Democrat ever elected to that position in Pennsylvania. Tonight, she has just been convicted on nine criminal charges, including perjury and criminal conspiracy. And let's look 
at Michigan. Kwame Kilpatrick will serve a sentence that will be used as a strong warning to any public official tempted towards making a career of corruption. Kwame Kilpatrick will be 71 years old when he gets out of prison. Judge Edmonds called Kilpatrick's corruption in office corrosive to the city, saying, quote, we lost transparency, we lost accountability during his six years as Detroit mayor. The judge said the 43-year-old deserved a long prison sentence for his 24 convictions on racketeering, bribery, tax crime, crimes and other charges. U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid says Kilpatrick looted the city and her office won't tolerate public officials stealing from Detroit. Former State Senator Burt Johnson headed to prison. Today, a federal judge sentenced him to 90 days for giving a woman a no-show job on the taxpayer's dime. The feds say this former deputy Detroit chief gave lucrative towing deals to the highest briber. And now she's paying a hefty price for it. Cecilia Washington, she was the fifth highest ranking officer in the Detroit Police Department. She pleaded guilty to taking money from Detroit towing magnate Gaspar Fiore. They swore to serve and protect the citizens of Detroit, but tonight the seven investigators are revealing an alarming number of Detroit police officers that found themselves under arrest. Our investigation tonight reveals that since 2016, 64 Detroit police officers have been criminally charged. That is an alarming number and we should be concerned. And let's have a quick look at Illinois. Willie Cochran is now the latest former Chicago alderman to be convicted of official wrongdoing. Willie Cochran, three years after his initial indictment, pleading guilty today to federal wire fraud charges. Three of the last four aldermen in the 20th Ward going to prison on federal corruption charges. Willie Cochran's conviction today for many people, a long time coming. Another domino falls in a sprawling federal corruption probe that's now hit several suburbs. Now the former Cook County Commissioner and ex-mayor of McCook is facing federal charges. Tobolsky is accused of conspiring with an unnamed McCook official to extort money from an individual A using actual and threatened fear of economic harm. New at 10 in DuPage County judge, election judge, arrested for stealing these campaign signs. The DuPage County Republican Party sent out these pictures, so we checked it out. Turns out it's true. When Villa Park Police arrested Beverly Johnston, who is a Democrat, they found her car full of Republican signs. Johnston is charged with theft and criminal damage to property. Both are misdemeanors. Chicago is the most corrupt metropolitan region in the country, and Illinois is the third most corrupt state in the country. We've had more than 2,000 public officials go to jail. Four of our governors of the last nine have gone to jail. They'll call you and they'll make death threats. Illinois politicians come and go, but one man has remained, Mike Madigan. He's been called the king of Illinois and is considered more powerful than the governor. And arguably one of the most powerful politicians that we've seen in our lifetime. Madigan allegedly lobbied agencies to hire, promote, or give raises to his allies. In light of this, the media began accusing the speaker of engaging in a pattern of patronage hiring. It's hiring your idiot son or your goofy nephew or your worthless niece. They get paid a salary, they don't work too hard, and they owe you a favor. The Chicago Tribune found 400 current or retired government employees who had donated to or campaigned for Madigan. From the ranks of his alleged patronage army, Mike Madigan has built the most powerful political ground game in Illinois, using it to influence elections of all kinds across the state. We have breaking news right now. Prosecutors filed charges tonight in federal court accusing Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan's Four, four close associates in the ComEd corruption case. Court documents show a former Springfield lobbyist, a former ComEd CEO, and two others all face federal charges accused of falsifying company records and creating off-book accounts to disguise the corruption scheme. Well, for the first time in 50 years, Michael Madigan will not be a member of the Illinois General Assembly. Withdrawing from his role as Speaker of the House earlier this year and now announcing that he will resign his State House seat at the end of the month. His critics in the Republican Party have waited for this day Thank for you. decades, saying his control of the state legislature led to political corruption and fiscal crisis. You know what? Let's look at Massachusetts. 
She was caught allegedly stuffing bribe money down her bra. Now State Senator Diane Wilkerson faces federal charges. She allegedly accepted more than $23,000 from undercover agents. It's an arrest that is shaking Massachusetts politics, and we have team coverage. Wilkerson appeared before a judge at the federal courthouse this afternoon, charged with attempted extortion and theft of honest services. The mayor of Fall River arrested again. This time he's accused of extorting up to hundreds of thousands of dollars from marijuana companies. Federal prosecutors say Jaisal Correa demanded cash from groups looking to open pot shops in the city. As Fall River Mayor Jaisal Correa's chief of staff, Genevieve Andrade was often at his side running interference for the young city CEO. On Monday, during a virtual hearing before a Boston federal judge, the 49-year-old pleaded guilty to six counts including extortion, conspiracy, and bribery. Let's have a look at Ohio. The four council members plus a local attorney accepted bribes for votes. Now someone reportedly tipped off federal investigators about bribes in May of 2018, about years of misconduct. The case centered around allegations that Tyrone Riley, Yvonne Harper, Larry Sykes and Gary Johnson accepted bribes from business owners in exchange for their votes in city council. Cincinnati council member Tamaya Denard has been arrested on federal charges. Denard was arrested Tuesday morning on federal bribery, wire fraud and attempted extortion charges. Denard has faced several legal fights in her time in office. She is one of the so-called gang of five whose text messages landed them in court and she has an eviction lawsuit still pending a case of unpaid rent. And that's just a small sample of the absurd amount of corruption by Democrats that I was able to dig up. I did end up finding a list of criminal convictions of state and local politicians. This was on Wikipedia so you know, take that as you will. But I painstakingly entered all the data into an Excel sheet, and when I crunched the numbers, what I found was pretty astonishing. Democrat politicians commit crimes of corruption on a state and local level at almost three times that of Republicans. And this doesn't even account for the crimes that were n never caught or prosecuted or cases in which the criminal got away with it or in which corruption, you know, that isn't technically considered a crime was committed. And I think that they missed several crimes here. There were several cases of Democrat corruption that I researched, but that were not included in this list. And even famous ones like that of Jesse Jackson Jr. So, you know, this doesn't even tell the whole story. I suspect that Democrats actually commit acts of corruption at far higher rates than just three times that of Republicans. All right, so now... I'm going to present you here with my take on all of this. Keep in mind, this is wild speculation, so feel free to ignore it or believe it if it makes sense to you. In my previous video about Democrat corruption, the video that drew me into doing the research for this video, I speculated that there is some kind of blackmail ring in Washington, D.C. I speculated that so many congressmen and FBI agents and various other operators in D.C. had so much dirt on so many others in D.C., that there was a system of mutually assured destruction. The idea is that if one person goes down, then they'd take a few other people with them. Those others, they would take others with them, etc., until all the dominoes fell. In such a scenario, maybe half of DC would go down, maybe more. And such mutually assured destruction would be so vast that it would cripple our entire federal government. And because crippling the federal government in this way would be so devastating, just the prospect of this might be enough to serve as a bulwark against somebody like John Durham taking anybody down at all. And this, I speculated, is why Durham never arrested anyone, hasn't released an interim report, probably never will arrest anyone, and will probably eventually just re release this benign report that reports n nothing illegal, no wrongdoing, and indicts no one. But he may also be pressured in other ways. He may have been threatened, his family may have been threatened, or he may be the target of blackmail himself. And perhaps, along with the negative pressure, he may also be getting paid to keep his mouth shut. Negative levers like threats can be very powerful, but positive levers like money can also be very powerful. But negative pressure and positive pressure together is often irresistible. And if you combine these pressures with a desire to preserve the stability of the country, John Durham may have easily justified to himself going along with the DC swamp instead of fighting against it. And this is just one of the many suspicious instances of apparent corruption among Democrats on the federal level, which leads me to suspect that many of the instances of corruption on the local level that I've mentioned in this video here are in fact all part of a system of corruption. Again, this is wild speculation, but I believe this makes sense. 
it makes sense that those who control the purse, the Democrats in D.C. that can help in local races, either financially with organization or by endorsements, it makes sense that these Democrats might want to have some control over those on the local level that they're helping get into office. If the standard operating procedure of the Democrat Party includes using blackmail, then it would make sense that they're doing this to leverage politicians at a state and local level as well as those in D.C. And one way of using both negative leverage, blackmail, and positive leverage, money, both together at once, is to set up fraud operations in every Democrat-controlled state legislature and city council. If the state and local Democrat politicians have a simple template for committing fraud, taking bribes, etc., then they can become wealthy through their political office, but at the same time, those who have facilitated this corruption, provided the template for the schemes and all that kind of stuff, well, they now have evidence of those crimes. They can now at any time put pressure on these state legislatures, these city councils, these mayors to do precisely what they want them to do. What perfects this plan is the cooperation of the FBI. If there are top FBI agents who are in on this scheme, then there will never be investigations. Everything works out smoothly. Everything works out cleanly. And the mainstream media, well, they're not going to investigate any suspicious dealings of Democrat politicians. And so there's very little risk. No one ever gets caught. Everybody wins. Everybody but the good citizens of the country, that is. With such schemes in place, we end up losing many of our civil rights. In cases of election meddling, we lose our right to vote. In cases of bribery, we lose tax dollars. And honest businesses lose out on lucrative contracts. We want to encourage honest business in this country, not discourage it. But as the corruption becomes more widespread and the risk of exposure increases, we begin to lose our freedom of speech. Nosy reporters are fired. YouTubers and social media slews are censored and demonetized and eventually banned. At the end of the day, it's the American people who are being exploited and used and victimized. There is only one vulnerability in this scheme. If some honest FBI agents not involved in this ring of corruption catches scent of something suspicious, or if some intrepid local reporter is tipped off or in some other way stumbles upon one of these schemes, well, then the curtain is pulled back, the corruption is exposed, and the people end up going to prison. I think a lot of times the FBI agents who do investigate this stuff are local FBI agents. We often think of the FBI as, you know, headquartered in Washington, D.C., and that's where everybody is. But actually, there's a lot of local FBI agents. There's FBI agents in every state. So I think a lot of times those guys are far more honest than the guys in D.C. But unfortunately, it's rarely those facilitating the corruption, those orchestrating these schemes, that are caught. It's only ever the small fries, the local officials. And a lot of times, these local officials, even after they're caught, just get a slap on the wrist. They get out of it without any serious consequences. Now, this is because the Democrat machine takes care of itself. Even the justice system, in many cases, can be manipulated to serve the will of those in control. Look at what happened with Jussie Smollett. A puppet district attorney was installed. And then, when an open and shut case was dropped onto her desk, a case against a Hollywood actor acting in the interest of the Democrats against the Republicans, perpetrating a dangerous hoax that, had it been successful, could have led to riots, could have led to violence against Trump supporters that might have swayed vote in political elections. When this case came to her desk, it was summarily dismissed. The perpetrator, clearly guilty, was never arrested, never tried for his crimes, all because he was a leftist acting against conservatives. Imagine if that hoax had been orchestrated by a famous conservative trying to smear Democrats. Well, the perpetrator would have gone to prison for years. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when Democrats control the judicial system. There is no justice. So look, I don't know if there's a vast left-wing conspiracy, but just remember, whatever they're accusing us of, you know that's exactly what the Democrats are doing themselves. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy. Do you still believe there's a vast right-wing conspiracy? Don't you? <laughs> I'm asking you. Yeah, it's gotten even better funded. Look, these guys play for keeps. They want to control our country. They want to rig the economy so they continue to get richer and richer. They could care less about income inequality. They solve their consciences by giving big money to philanthropy and, you know, getting great pictures of them standing in front of whatever charity they donated to. They want to go after any 
economic interests that they don't believe they can control. They want to destroy our balance of power. They want to go after our political system and fill it with people who will do their bidding. At this point, it's probably not correct to say it's a conspiracy because it's out in the open. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they're corrupt. Good night. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening.